Hello and welcome to the Smarter Food Supply Chain webinar series. I'm Mike Allen and I serve AIM as their member engagement manager. AIM North America is an alliance enabling the cooperation, development, standardization of AIDC technologies. From barcodes to RFID to IoT, AIM North America is your advocate. Any organization with an interest in data collection is a beneficiary of these efforts. Membership provides an opportunity to influence the direction of the industry, develop policies and standards, access market reports, and engage new partners. Before we get started, there are a few housekeeping items I would like to go over. First is the AIM antitrust policy. It is the policy of AIM North America to conduct its operations in strict compliance with the antitrust laws. No AIM activities shall create even the appearance of a violation of the letter or spirit of the antitrust laws. Next is our collaboration and work product policy. AIM presentations are held for the primary purpose of advancements in our industry. AIM has developed this policy for the protection of its members who engage in this important collaborative effort. Some other housekeeping notes, you are muted throughout the presentation. If you do have questions for Jeremy, there will be a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Please chat those questions to AIM member services. Also, a recording of today's presentation will be made available. Today, I'm here with Jeremy Schneider, an expert on food safety and quality assurance for Control It. Jeremy will be discussing today solving food supply chain challenges through state-of-the-art technology. Welcome, Jeremy. Thank you very much for that welcome. And uh, thank you to all of our attendees today. After, after concluding this uh, presentation, you should have a better understanding of the following topics. The keys to preparing your team for successful technology implementation, adopting next era technology to achieve the standards laid out in the new era of smart food safety, and gaining company-wide transparency and clarity by leveraging real-time control tower technology that empowers all stakeholders. But before I begin, I'd like to familiarize you with how control and health organizations find success, starting with our mission. We seek to improve perishable products quality and safety as well as reduce global cold chain waste by 90%. We believe that technology plays a pivotal role in achieving these goals by allowing collaboration and data sharing that helps mitigate risks and strengthen the global supply chain. Our real-time insights allow organizations to move from a position of reaction to prevention, empowering businesses to make smarter science-driven decisions and support quality and compliance efforts. Controllant was founded in 2007 in Iceland with our roots in the highly regulated pharmaceutical industry. We bring this level of sophistication and science-driven decision-making to the food industry. In fact, we are currently monitoring the global distribution of the extremely temperature-sensitive COVID-19 vaccines with our technology. We operate worldwide with more than 300 customers, including some of the biggest names in QSR and food manufacturing. We meet regulatory required compliance with the Food Safety Modernization Act tr Sanitary Transport Rule and are preparing companies for the new era of smarter food safety. Our clients find value in our three pillars. First, with our hardware. Our hardware is a wirelessly connected data logger that provides critical information such as time, temperature, geolocation, light and pressure sensing, all in real time. Second, our software. Our cloud-based platform provides users live visibility into their shipments across the globe allowing them access to critical shipping information on active and historic loads. And from this, the data can be used to improve your programs and processes. And thirdly, our proactive partnership services. We provide actionable insights so that our partners can focus on process improvements. We take care of the hardware pool management and offer intervention services to act on an organization's behalf to minimize the need for internal resources when managing a 24-7, 365 program. The supply chain is complex, and many of us are not experts in the intricacies of this part of our organization. And as you can see from this graphic, companies generally have a pretty good idea of where they purchase their foods and ingredients from and where they sell them to. But when you start getting into tier two, tier three through in, however deep that goes in your company, things begin to get fuzzy at best or worst altogether unknown. Supply chain visibility is all about knowing where the inventory is at a particular time and that it's in the quality conditions that you expect. 
Improperly managed supply chains can pose significant risks, which are often unknown until the unexpected occurs. Minimizing supply chain risk is one of the primary goals of the new era of smarter food safety. It is, the, it is structured to enhance and build on the successes of FISMA to flatten the curve on foodborne illness. The new era of smarter food safety's core tenants include that it be one, people-led, two, FISMA-based, and three, tech-enabled. In addition, the new era of blueprint outlines four core elements, including tech-enabled traceability, smarter tools and approaches for prevention and outbreak response, new business models and retail modernization, and food safety culture. So what does this mean for you and your organization? Companies are being challenged to try new and innovative technologies to help solve previously unsolvable supply chain risks. Innovation is key to achieving these goals. Speaking to smarter tools and approaches element, companies need to identify those inherent risks within their business and develop innovative approaches to mitigate them. And as the name applies, the intention is to challenge organizations to test and implement new and innovative technologies within their operations and supply chain. Technology has been widely adopted within our homes and our in the consumer world. This innovation is now available within the food industry as well. And lastly, the most essential and challenging element of all is food safety culture, which requires empowering people to do the right thing all of the time, even when people are not looking. We understand that this can be the touchy feely portion that can be really challenging. I don't have to make a case to this organization about why tech adoption is essential. We all live this every day, but for the food industry in general, this has this is still a great challenge for our industry. And to this end, we need to consider, pilot, and implement the most innovative and state-of-the-art technologies to solve our significant challenges. If we want to bend the curve on foodborne illness outbreaks, we must think and do differently. And technology is a tool to assist us in this endeavor. Future success will require technology adoption. Moreover, Customer and consumer demands are rapidly changing and requiring investment to keep up. Food safety teams will need to solve these quality and safety challenges, whether from, tra from the traceability rule to technology adoption. As we've found, food safety through technology provides a competitive advantage in the market. In contrast, the cost of doing nothing is simply unacceptable and can lead to reduced brand trust and consumer harm. Prior to the pandemic, many companies had been extremely slow to adopt new technologies. COVID-19 has made us think differently um, about the supply chain and consumer safety. The new era provides an incentive and the ability to research and implement tools to move food safety forward. Now is the time to use technology to our benefit. So one of the most significant causes of food safety risk is temperature abuse. And the supply chain is a significant contributor to this risk. And when it comes to thinking about the supply chain, much of our focus is on, the trace of, on, is on traceability systems, which are critical to recall and withdrawal purposes. However, a noteworthy failure of track and trace technology is that although properly tuned programs will tell you where the product is, it does not guarantee the foods being tracked are safe. Simply stated, this is not the intended purpose of these tools. Additionally, in light of COVID-19, we have seen the fragility of the cold supply chain, which has been recently placed in center stage over the last year or so. Although some of this has subsided, it illuminated previously undetected supply chain risks that could potentially jeopardize safety as well. So let's consider the smarter technology devices most of us have within our homes, TVs, Alexas, iPhones, and the multitude of other devices that we've happily adopted for personal use. But why not in the food industry? When we know that adopting IoT technologies can provide meaningful and long-term insights into, the, into your programs and show previously unavailable information in truly real time. Taking a preventative controls approach to mitigate these uh, and preventing these risks reasonably likely to occur, like loss of power and or refrigeration is a good approach. Since scenarios like power loss are extremely probable, 
you should have a preventative control like, like real-time temperature monitoring in place to mitigate this type of risk. And then partnering with those who can help. Developing internal solutions can lead to a tool that's three years behind schedule and already obsolete. And when, but when we work with and partner with technology providers, you can rest assured that you will always be receiving the most current available technology that usually comes with periodic systems upgrades. And then building a team for tech adoption and enablement helps create buy-in for multiple stakeholders. Technology implementation projects are never the type where you wanna go it alone. So develop a strategic team to help achieve all of your goals and carry the weight of the implementation process. Technology is a tool to help you just like any other. Before using any technology solution, think about what you need it to do now and into the future, not just what it currently does today. Have you ever had a situation where you knew that there was a supply chain problem, but you couldn't identify the cause of it? We all can say that we have ideas of what might have happened, but we can't know for sure. However, with supply chain monitoring insights, you can shed lights on those risks and permanently solve them. And do you have, do you have access to predictive analytics? This can help you better understand where problems are and show you how to avoid them into the future. Predictive analytics are critical to move from, from reacting to risks after the fact and being able to prevent them in the first place. You can determine the best routes to take or see which suppliers pose the most significant risks. And then actionable insights are possible using real-time IoT technology. If your tools don't allow for real-time intervention, you will, need, you will still be stuck in reactionary mode. With data, you can, move, you can make science-driven decisions such as mandating uh, continuous mode use on truck reefers instead of the cycle mode, which is very common because it shows a much wider range in temperatures. This information rolls up to your organization's supplier scorecard, which has been a priority for our industry for quite a long time. But setting these up as actionable and verifiable can be challenging. And these should be made to be automated uh, so that it, so it redu reduces the burden on our teams and improves processes. We've seen with our pharma customers that one great use of technology is to create the modern control tower that connects various stakeholders across multiple systems. The control tower also enhances supply chain resilience and should include several key components. Let's start with real-time visibility, which is IoT enabled granular visibility, which is happening uh, in your supply chain as it happens. It includes integration of systems to create a single source of truth across all parties and includes cross-functional collaboration among external and internal stakeholders. You need various forms of analytics, including descriptive analytics, such as what has happened, live an analytics, such as what is happening, predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics, such as what will happen and what should I do? And is your supply chain responsive, flexible, and able to pivot when needed? Increased responsiveness will be imperative to building resilient supply chains. Services like 24 seven monitoring and response teams who proactively work with your manufacturer and logistics providers to respond to risks as it happens will be critical parts of the supply chain moving into the future. We can trigger automated notifications and communications that tells end users what they need to do next through interconnected systems. And then continuous improvement can be achieved through setting and measuring tangible KPIs against real-time data. Short and long-term trends become more easily identified and action plans can be developed to drive continuous improvement. And then collaboration with internal and external partners includes additional, process, uh, additional communication and alignment through shared goals, metrics, and processes. And the control tower is automated. This includes automating business uh, logistics and quality release processes. It includes automation of communications and data sharing among all parties. Each aspect is needed to strengthen and improve resilience uh, and build resilient supply chains. How does the control tower and technology impact your preventive control strategy uh, to your supply chain management? Preventative controls are those programs that are intended to prevent issues as they are reasonably likely to occur. To give you an example, we often identify issues in the supply chain where the refrigeration 
uh, unit of an over-the-road truck loses power during a shipment. Putting temperature-sensitive ingredients, raw materials, and finished goods at risk of being held at unsafe temperatures. And since this is a risk that is reasonably likely to occur, implementing a real-time temperature monitoring program is sensible and prudent solution to mitigating this risk. Let's see how a preventive controls approach worked within this case study, within a case study. In this example, you will see an in-transit deviation of a highly perishable fresh chicken shipment from Arkansas to the Pacific Northwest. During the shipment, control and sensor identified a, an ident a deviation and triggered a high temperature alert at hour 14 of the 40 hour shipment. Then the control and monitor and response services team immediately jumped into action and contacted the carrier's dispatch who alerted the driver. The driver adjusted the reefer according to the control and instructions, which were based on, consumer, on customer's specification. And this intervention prevented the loss and avoided sh a shortage or waste at the final destination, saving time money, and money and meeting the, cu the customer's conditional requirements for the products. And so this is a question that we often receive. How will a real-time temperature monitoring supply chain program provide our organization with a competitive advantage? We've all seen the demands of goods increase. However, the pandemic has made it even more challenging to meet these requirements safely and meet and exceed the customer's expectation. But what if you were able to say to your leadership that implementing a real-time program would help you ensure on-time delivery to your customer at a quality level that you expect and demand? Through real-time visibility insights, insights, this is possible. And what we've heard from the market is that most con the most consistent wins more customers. So think about that. Being able to meet your company's company uh, requirements, drive sales while reducing costs. That is a win-win. And so let's look at another case study where this was the situation. In this example, we saved a customer shipment from destruction after a severe temperature excursion. In this situation, a, beer, a large beer distributor was launching a brand new American product into the, into the Mexico market. The product is known for its high quality standards and meeting the demand uh, was mission critical. During transit, we identified the temperatures were be, had dropped below boundaries since it was once it was received at the distribution center. And as you can see in the teal section, the tri this triggered a workflow. And in this situation, the beer was placed into a freezer because the refrigerator was not working consistently. And this is an excellent example of when our escalation process was implemented because of a business rule being broken. It tracked the shipment to the distributor's location. So then logistics used this information to improve distribution programs while quality was able to save the shipment and reduce the chances of outages and shortages. All companies that ship refrigerated foods have specific parameters for conditional attributes, such as temperature. But what if you were able to manage additional business rules that are important to you? If our customers can predefine business rules, such as identify optimal routes for your trucks to take, See when doors have been opened through the use of light events, which helps strengthen your transportation security programs. And this also helps mitigate the risk of tampering and theft. And then determine if pallets were broken down and separated. Ascertain if shipments were delayed or if there were longer dwell times at a specific location. And you can also locate shipments that may have arrived at the wrong location. So let's take a look at a final case study to see how predefined business rules were broken. And the way our system quickly identified this as an issue to be prevented. Here you will see how our customers' predefined business rules can shed light on incidences in the supply chain that may have otherwise gone undetected. In this situation, there was a shipment by sea from Brussels, Belgium to Louisville, Texas, in the United States. We saw the vessel broke down during the winter which required shipments to be rerouted unexpectedly to Northern Europe, which caused a business rule to be broken since the ship entered an unexpected and unplanned port. Our team saw the delay in real time. Due to it being winter, the temperature went below the boundaries and impacted the product. 
The data that was collected facilitated a quality review, and fortunately, the products were still, be, were still able to be released. But with these insights, the shipment was saved and prevented uh, product loss and waste at the final destination. So those last examples showed the importance of having a technology-enabled supply chain. And here are steps you can take to prepare for it. Begin by defining the critical needs and wants, which will take time, but going through the time required is valuable as it takes, uh, as it sets you up for success. By spending the time and effort in this area, you can be assured that you will end up with a product that you need and want. Build a, uh, Build a project support team. Take the necessary time to define all of the critical stakeholders from the very beginning and bring them into the conversation, including internal and external teams. This process allows individuals to define their, their needs and wants so that they can be incorporated into the bigger plan and then develop that plan with them. With the teams uh, that you've been working with, so it's very collaborative in, pro in process. In this process, we recommend defining the end state. Where do you want to be when, when the project is complete? And then defining all of the steps in between, which provides you with the roadmap you need to move forward. Without knowing where you're going, you'll never know when you get there. And then lastly, in the process, make sure you set stretch goals that are tough but achievable. Setting goals from where you are to where you're going and defining each step along the process allows you to measure success and make changes along the way if needed. So it's critical that we also think about the return on investment of technology implementation. We have found that having a robust technology strategy is one way to set your organization apart and minimize food safety risks. ROI is critical for each of our customers, and these are typical for various teams that see value uh, from our program in different ways. Logis logistics departments can reduce or eliminate stockouts, minimize storage costs because there are shorter release times and decrease spending on packaging materials because the data shows what works and what doesn't. And then quality teams uh, value decreased excursion rates and the amount of time spent on shipment review. They appreciate complete visibility um, of shipments of the shipment's environmental conditions as well as compliance for reporting for audits that can be trusted. And then finance departments uh, that manage insurance appreciate the reductions in premiums that they can tangibly measure. A decrease in risk often translates directly to lowered insurance premiums. And then supply chain teams are always looking at ways to optimize and save money through evidence-based improvements formulated by real-time data. And last but certainly not least is sustainability. Utilizing our real-time insights allow organization, uh, allow teams uh, to improve their sustainability efforts uh, for reporting purposes. And overall, businesses often save millions of dollars annually in, op in operational and product costs by implementing our real-time uh, monitoring programs. And ultimately, real-time supply chain temperature monitoring is here. And it is already revolutionizing how organizations manage their businesses and help solve uh, their most significant challenges. By breaking down barriers and silos, teams are working collaboratively to help solve each other's challenges. Tech-enabled companies can move from a place of reaction to prevention. And through these actions, they can reduce food safety risks while improving business uh, and operational programs. At this time, I'd be happy to take some questions. All right, thank you, Jeremy, for your time and knowledge. So let's get uh, right into those questions. Uh, first question we have is, our organization has historically been slow at technology adoption because of costs. Our company leadership has been the old way we've done things as sufficient. How would you recommend we begin our technology adoption journey? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and it's something that we hear fairly often. We know that in the um, food industry, tech adoption has been slow. Um, a lot of facilities are still working on paper. And so getting, um, you know, adopting technology is something that um, does take time. And I would recommend that you begin by identifying some of the most significant challenges that you have been able to 
uh, that you have been unable to solve up until this point, uh, following your current standards and programs. And then seeing how all of your, um, seeing how technology would help you solve these going forward. For instance, if you have a problem with a specific shipping lane um, that you continuously experience challenges on, perhaps this may be where you wanna test real-time IoT technology to help solve this type of challenge. Okay, great. Another question we've received is, we've tried to implement technology in the past with low success rates, primarily because it never lives up to its promise. What's the best course of action to avoid this costly mistake in the future? Yeah, I think that just about all of us can point towards a situation or two in, the, in our past especially if we've been around long enough where we invested in some sort of solution, uh, be it a, a warehouse management system or a different type of technology and it, and it didn't uh, meet our requirements. And um, oftentimes we find that our that companies would rather just continue to do uh, work with their old ways of doing things instead of implement new programs because they're concerned about that risk. Um, and I always recommend that our clients try the technology through a pilot trial or some sort of temperature study to understand the abilities and limitations of the tool. Um, this way, companies can be assured that their systems, that the system will meet their needs from the very beginning. Um, and if companies don't, um, to see if it works for them and, or if not. And, and what I found that if companies are not ready to allow you to test drive before committing to it, um, that may not be a partner you want to, um, to work with in the future because oftentimes these investments are significant and they should be around for quite a long time. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question we have is what best practices have you seen in developing a technology implementation team and who should be invited? Yeah, so when we're working with our clients on rolling out um, a real-time supply chain temperature monitoring program, I always recommend that they bring anybody to the table that will touch the program. And this is a great time to think really big. This could include members, obviously, like your supply chain and logistics teams, purchasing and procurement teams, distributors, third-party logistics carriers, your quality teams, maybe even finance or other people that may be on the peripheral, but they could gain value from the insights. And then as you go through the process that we talked about on the previous slide, how they recommend listening to their needs, wants, and desires, and then incorporating these into the bigger program, because um, that'll ensure buy-in across your organization. So when, when the members of the team feel heard and they're, they're actually getting their problems solved as well, they'll be uh, more invested into the program and, and the success for it ultimately over time. Okay, great. Uh, we have another question and it is, uh, you spoke about the concept of control tower visibility, a single source of truth to be utilized for the various different teams across an organization. This all sounds well and good, but also mm -hmm. sounds complex and time consuming. How would an orga organization get started? Yeah, you know, control tower is, um, it's, it's, it's very exciting. Obviously, a lot of organizations are actively working on it or they're talking about it. And you're not incorrect in stating that the project will take time and effort and dedicated resources. Um, but a project like this must have leadership buy-in at the very highest level because these control towers are um, complete enterprise tools. Um, so, you know, getting the buy-in at that executive leadership, at the, um, you know, CEO level, CFO, uh, COO level is critical, right? To, to make sure that you get success um, across the program and, and through your whole organization. Um, we spoke to some of the critical processes that you must consider in starting this project. Um, and those will certainly set you up for success in the future, but, um, but making sure that you have that buy-in at, at the highest level and showing, you know, how this is going to, uh, you know, bring value to the organization, but through saving money increased sales and, and so on and so forth will certainly, um, you know, help organizations move projects like this along. Another question we received is how has the pandemic affected our food supply chain? Has there been a difference in the U S compared to other countries? Um, you know, that's a great question. We've seen some, uh, significant impacts in the su supply chain here in the States. Um, 
there was a lot of issues with uh, food not being in the location that it needed to be um, and getting it into the right place at the right time. We all saw pictures of, you know, fields being dissed under and, and, and milk being dumped because um, there wasn't the ability to move it around. Um, other countries also um, experienced issues like that. Um, obviously trade importing and exporting was significant. Um, many of the members may or may not have heard of, um, there was a lot of um, chicken being exported from the US into China, which, um, you know, were on the water far before um, COVID became, uh, you know, something that we were very familiar with. And um, once it got to port, there was nobody to pick it up. There's nowhere to move it. And, um, and they quickly ran out of space. Um, so yeah, we saw, we saw um, issues kind of everywhere um, to different degrees. Um, obviously not living in um, European countries or other places, we didn't see it so much, uh, but we did hear some of those um, anecdotal uh, situations where uh, the supply chain was really severely impacted. Another question we received is uh, that food waste is a major issue. How does technology, like mentioned here, help some help stop some of this? Yeah, that's a great question, um, and we know that uh, sustainability is is definitely a program that is has gained relevance in the last few years. Obviously, we hear a lot about it on the news and on TV, and um, we're gonna, you know everybody can relate to what's happened, you know, within your own household. Um, but we understand that a significant loss of food is in the supply chain. And um, that a lot of that, it comes directly to temperature abuse, loss of temperature control. Um, so utilizing a technology such as real-time IoT, uh, such as ours, um, allows organizations, as soon as they identify a trend of a temperature you know, excursion outside of the uh, ranges that they expect, they can actively uh, intervene to contact their third, third party logistics carrier, their internal organization and teams um, or whoever's responsible for the supply chain portion of their uh, distribution and can uh, actively take an intervention approach. So contact the carrier, have them pull over, check their refrigeration unit, pull it into um, a facility to transload or, or move it into a warehouse um, to, to get the the truck fixed. And, and so that dramatically reduces waste in the supply chain because a lot of times what happens now is uh, the product ends up at the distribution center. You, they pulp it or they take a temperature. They find that it's out of, out of range and it's automatically rejected um, without understanding what might have happened or being able to take a, a prevention approach. So that is dramatically reducing um, waste. And it obviously um, goes down to dollars and cents at that point because you're saving money and time. Another question we received is, in a fragmented transportation ecosystem, is real time really actionable? Um, absolutely. You know, part of the risks and concerns about a fragmented supply chain is um, you need to be able to understand that supply chain, right? If, if you don't know who's carrying your product and you don't have contacts, um, you know, real time doesn't do you any good because, um, because you can't actually take, an, take a um, a prevention approach. So, you know, one of the part of one of the things that a lot of organizations do when they're implementing is they need to really map their supply chain and understand who's carrying it, who do we reach out to, and how do we do it? Um, because, yeah, perfect to the point is if you don't know who's distributing the product and you have, um, you know, a real time sensor on there and you know there's a problem and you don't know who to reach out to, then it doesn't do you much good. So, you have to have some of those baseline pieces in place. Uh, before these types of programs, you know, can show real value. Okay, great. Uh, another question we have is, uh, what role do the standards play and which ones are more important? Yeah, absolutely. Standards play a critical role um, in this, right? And specifically, you know, if you're looking at the, um, the, the traceability rules, um, what information is being collected and how do you want to um, capture that information um, utilizing a technology like ours, um, layer on top of a traditional uh, traceability tool. You want to make sure you collect the right information in the right format. Um, however, that is defined. You know, a lot of this is still up in the air. We know there's specific items that are going to be require specific information. 
And so, and then also some of those points like uh, locations and how you define those, you, you can utilize those, um, you know, you can set those points up within our system as points of interest um, to, to assure that certain information can be captured. And going back to some of those business rules, um, you know, through a, you know, an analysis of the system, you can note, okay, if I need to collect specific information for uh, an item that's being shipped, you can set that up as a business rule to require that being collected, um, you know, and set up into the system. So it does play a critical role in, um, in the process. Okay, great. And to close out our question and answer session here, uh, we have been following the developments of the new era of food, of smarter food safety very closely since its inception and are in full agreement with the core elements and focus. With that said, the recommendations haven't been written into law. So how do you recommend we prepare? Yeah, this is definitely a question. And I know that a lot of organizations are always concerned about making investments before they're codified or, or finalized. Um, but with that said, I, I do recommend organizations actively move forward through the research, testing, and implementation of new technologies. Uh, we have a really good idea of um, where regulation is thinking, and, and obviously the industry has a significant impact on that. Um, organizations um, like AIM have significant impact on um, the direction of these rules, um, and we can obviously provide a public comment through that. Um, but we understand the general direction of where things are going. And so spending the time and effort uh, now to, to implement and test some of these programs will definitely put you miles ahead when, um, you know, when they're codified and um, are required. And you don't want to get caught behind the eight ball you know, when we get to that point and trying to meet some sort of deadline that may be set, um, even though we have a general idea of the direction of, of where things are going. And, and, and to add one other point is, um, you know, obviously your um, tech providers are, are following these as closely as possible and obviously aligning with the requirements as well. So that's, that's the recommendation I would have um, for this type of question. Great. Thank you, Jeremy. And thank you for answering uh, some of our audience questions here. Greatly appreciated getting more insights Absolutely. from you. All right. Thanks, Jeremy and uh, Controllant again for uh, taking part in this part of our AIM food supply chain webinar series. Uh, we have the contact information for both AIM North America and Jeremy here as well. Uh, thank you, audience, again, for your active participation today. Jeremy, thank you once again for uh, all the information you provided us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to the organization. I appreciate it. And I look forward to continuing uh, the work. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day.